the pain that you feel is like you cannot get comfortable in your own skin. And you are longing and waiting and hoping and angry, you know, that nothing's changing, everything's changing, you know, because of nothing changing, right. everything is, is changing. changing. True. And so you're, God, where are you? Where? Where are you? Yeah. You know, and he whispers, right here. Yeah. I am right here. Welcome again to the Gary Wilkson Podcast. Honored and blessed to have you here with us today. I want to ask you a couple questions. If you were to be facing a serious difficulty in your life, emotional, mental, physical, relational with others, maybe you were depressed, maybe you felt suicidal, maybe there was an addiction in your life, the question I have for you is, do you believe your church would be able to handle it well, help you through it, struggle with you, pray with you, counsel you, share with you? Today's episode, we have uh, a brother who's been helping me uh, co-host over the last few weeks and months, and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future as we're discussing some of these issues of pastoral care, soul care. We're calling it Renovation of the Heart for Kingdom Leaders. And today, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Mark Mayfield, is going to be interviewing uh, two women. Uh, one happens to be my wife, Kelly. Uh, we've been married 43 years, four children, nine grandchildren. And uh, she has been through a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty, a lot of loss. Uh, and yet she's come through shining, and she's come through with a testimony and a story of what God can do in her life, in our marriage, and in our children's lives, and our grandchildren's lives as well. She's joined uh, with a, one of our dearest friends. Uh, you probably, if you've uh, lo- watched some of our past podcasts, you saw Matt and Deanne Ward uh, with us telling the story about a loss of a child. And Deanne's here today with us on this podcast as well, being interviewed by Dr. Mark. And, um, you know, there's just, boy, talk about pain, loss, and suffering and how the church can handle with that. So there's some serious issues, but there's some great hope. And we believe this hope is something that's going to um, help you help your community, and help your family. Uh, Enjoy this episode. Well, thank you for joining us for this, I think, second episode of just talking about really some uh, important things around mental health, addiction, and the church. Last episode was very, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it before you listen to this one, because I think it sets the stage for practical tips and tools for uh, pastors in the churches to to be caregivers. It doesn't answer all the questions, but I think uh, Waffle, we had uh, some links in the show notes for resources that pastors could use. But I, I do want to get a little bit more personal uh, on this episode because I think the biggest thing I've found uh, as a counselor uh, is that when I have um, pastors come in and sit with me, they, they feel like they have nobody else to turn to, or there is this unspoken shame that is, you know, this voice in the back of their head that really nobody nobody brought up, but it's just there. You know, obviously we know it's spiritual warfare. It's the evil one that's trying to 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 uh, uh, make what they're doing invalid, but a, a place to talk, you know, a place to 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 go to. And so um i would I would love for you just as to share a little bit about your 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 personal experience with mental health and addiction uh, from what you guys have experienced as a family and in, in ministry. Um, and, and I want to talk a little bit about the advice today to, we're not speaking, we're speaking to the pastors, but we're speaking to them as mom and dad. Right. And okay, mom and dad, you have a kid that is struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, they're either in your home still, or, you know, even more difficult, which seems counterintuitive, even more difficult. Now they're out of the house. Now they're married. Right. Now they have kids and they're still struggling. Like, what do we do? How do we help? So uh, I'm trying I'll, to respect those boundaries, but yeah. so. Know, if so, you have somebody who's an addict in your life, mm-hmm. to think that you can maintain it and control it, the two of you, one addict, one caregiver. Yeah. First of all, the caregiver is going to break because it probably caught them off guard. They're probably, by the time they're aware of it and dealing with it, mm-hmm. it's way down the road. Yeah. Because like we said before, it didn't start with addiction. Right. It started with all these other life incidents or, you know, nurture nature, career, family, too many kids. Not, a, I mean, something, there was a progress that happened. Well, would you, would you be both be willing to just speak a little bit about uh, why you have the authority to speak on this? Because I do believe you have more authority than I even do to speak on this topic. 
You want to go first? Sure. Okay. Um, so our story is by the time that we found out that our daughter was struggling with addiction, she had five kids. Mm. She was the first 12 years of her marriage. She was superwoman. Mm. She was also the kid that we called the blue chip kid because um, but not that she was perfect. I mean, she she was really, really smart, but no common sense. Mm. Loved people, but guarded. Sure. Um Never thought she'd be married and have kids. So when she got married and we gave our blessing, we thought this is great, and then started having the kids. She also was a worship leader. Mm -hmm. She was teaching at a charter school. Mm -hmm. She's got three of the five kids and two sports. He's a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. There's a lot of expectations with that. So to quote her, Mom, I was superwoman for 12 years, and vodka became my kryptonite. Mm -hmm. But that she didn't start with, I'm just done. I'm just going to do whatever. It was, I'm not sleeping. I've had, you know, child number four. I can't keep up with the schedule. I'm stressed. I just need this. Like I said, it didn't just start with, right, I'm, gonna go I'm drinking this. and I'm blacking out. Right. That's not where it started. But because she was married, they kept it from us. That's their call. I can't go back and change it today. Right. But there are days where I go, I wish we had had the opportunity to possibly intervene, mm -hmm. to possibly step in and do that versus a, um, I don't trust your daughter. She's drunk. I'm dropping her off. It's three in the morning. And we're like, what's going on? Right. Seriously, what's going on? We have no concept or context. We had no, no. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, that to me, that sounds like you have a date. Somebody had too much wine to drink. You have a fight. You get mad. Not, oh, this has been an issue. And she's been to rehab. And we didn't even know that. Mm. I mean, it was it was a lot of information quick, right? But it was also I think that I'm not going to speak for um, for their situation, just my window into their situation, sure, sure. which was I think there was embarrassment, mm -hmm. there was shame, mm -hmm. there was guilt mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, I have read the text between both of them mm -hmm. for that last two years of their marriage. Mm -hmm. Those were really hard days, mm -hmm. you know, um, to to get full context of what was actually going on. And then, you know, when you do trust a few people and tell them what's going on, like, well, did she know she was an addict? Did you know she was struggling? You just, there are days you want to look at them and go, yeah, I totally knew and ignored it all. When it's like, no, not, right. your mother wouldn't do that. A father wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, trying to walk children through what's going on. When's mom coming back? What's going on? I mean, it was just, um, it, it happened quick and hard. Mm. So we were left going, what just happened? Yeah. You know, and still yeah. to that degree. You know, and then after she passes away, very well intending people, well, God needed her. You know what? A stupid no. Stupid The like God that. of heaven yeah. and earth, creator of everything I see out here in Colorado, the mountains, the right. streams, the rivers, the birds, all the animals, we are his masterpiece. We're intricately made. He lacks nothing. Yeah. He didn't need my kid. Yeah. Yeah. Her kids need her. Yeah. Her husband needed her. Mm -hmm. I still need her. Mm -hmm. So moving forward after that, because, um, yeah, I just, yeah, it was, I probably get the stats wrong. I want to say we had three rehabs, stint in jail, two sober livings in the period of six months. And then she was here from April to um, about six months before she had passed away. Mm. I mean, when I say it happened fast, it happened fast. fast. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, so my education started after she was gone. How did this happen and how did we land here? Right. And then you also have the story where you become the people around you. You have some, not them, <laughs> right. but there are people that have grown children that are struggling with different addiction issues and were their worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, our story terrifies them. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Mm -hmm. I didn't write that story. I'm no. part of that story, yep. but I didn't write that story. All I get to do is write what moves forward, which um, the last thing I would have ever done was gone off the cliff <laughs> into mental health and understanding anxiety, depression, grief, and loss, and having a website and having resources and bringing you in to go, okay, you, you bring something to the table that I don't. Mm. And to, I mean, there was nothing for me when I went looking and when I was trying to pull all the stuff in. How are we made physically? What do the chemicals in our body do? What does, <clears throat> I had a conversation in California this week and I didn't, 
I have a new lesson to learn. I didn't realize that when you deprive your body of food, because we all go on diets and we're going to yeah. do things in January or whatever, but this person had dropped so much weight so quick that it affected his brain. Oh, 100%. That he went into a depression. Yep isn't functioning. He's a CEO of a big company. And he goes, I thought I was just going to take care of myself. I'm going to drop 20 pounds. I'm going to do it quick. I'm going to do this. And he said, and it totally messed everything up for four months. Yeah. Okay. Well, well my daughter dropped 35 pounds quick. Yeah. Well, that played into her decision-making process. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean she gets a pass, but it was one, it was one more layer. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think research shows that you can only, you should only healthy, healthily drop one to one and a half pounds a week is 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 max. Right. Right. And these fad things and this, that, and the other thing, yeah. and whatever, you know, that plays into a bunch of things. And we're holistic beings. Right. So I, I appreciate, thank you for sharing that. And I mean, did, was she overwhelmed? Yes. Yeah. Was she um, not heard? I mean, I'll, I can look at all the different things, and I'm not. Right. I mean, it's just that's what we learned. You slow down, yep. listen, and know as much as you can. Yeah. Well, I want to be able to help somebody come in. I mean, I wish this wasn't a pandemic, right? Because that is our next pandemic. It is. Is mental health. It is. Um, came out of the World Health Organization last year. That that, and you can see it everywhere now. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! I mean, you can't go to the airport and not see a magazine that doesn't have something on the cover, or the Good Morning shows, or the news shows. I mean, we are. This is the next crisis. Right. Is mental but health you, and how do we move but forward? But you see it in the grocery store lines. You do. At Walmart and driving down here in Colorado, I twenty five, and the road rage and the yes. Right. I mean, it's it's it's. I just I just got back last night uh, from a trip and yeah. and just. I'm a people watcher, not creepy, but just, you know, but it's, I'm watching people in the airport and how they're handling, I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's. Delays or cancellations. Or, yeah. They don't handle it well. Right. So Our passengers, we've seen it on yeah. TV. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Dan, thank you for sharing that story. Um, and, and I just, one, I'm honored to know you and also to work with you, but you, you do it from a, a, a place of honesty and vulnerability and. You know, and powerful. it is powerful. And I don't know very many people that would have your story to go, okay, now let's help other people. Most of the time it's. Yeah. You know. I don't, I don't want to have to do it over because I missed a lesson the first time through. Sure. Yeah. I want to learn as much as I can. Yeah. You know, in every circumstance. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank, you know, and for those that are listening, um, you know, I think. To be able to, to to come to that vulnerability and to come to that place of almost probably powerlessness is what it feels oh, yeah. like, right? Um, is is it's important because we get out of the way to be able to go. Okay, what do we need to learn? Where do we need to go? How do we need to support? And we'll go. I'll come, I'll come back to this because I think the um, the part of walking with somebody in an addiction like that is we we vacillate between em, em, empowering. Um, or um, uh, trying to fix, you know, where where is that where is that line? We don't want to be enmeshed. We don't want to be. Yeah. We also need to have boundaries. But we also want to make them. You know, it it's not clear cut. No, um, it is very messy. And so I'd love to come back a little bit later and talk through um, lessons learned. Can I um, say one more thing? Please, yeah, yeah. The one, the one thing that Matthew and I learned on this process was he did the tough love, mm -hmm. do the line in the sand when you're sober for ninety days, right. We'll have lunch, we'll have dinner, and we'll reconnect. Yeah. I was always available, checked in with her, and saw. We both took completely different approaches. Yeah. We both still lost her. Yep. So there wasn't a right or a wrong. Right. But some people in the midst of that process, well, you're you're in crisis, and they're going, well, you're a house divided. No, we weren't a house divided. Because you guys were still talking. He did what he th felt God wanted him to do. Yep. And I did the same. We also need to release people to do what God's called them to do and support them in it. And we don't have to agree. Well, and that's right. And, uh, you can have different yes. approaches and right. it's okay. You can have different I'm gonna, giftings. Well, I'm going to say something very unpopular in the, in the therapeutic world, but I agree with you, right? In the therapeutic world, why now you got to follow these steps <laughs> and you got to do these things because you don't yeah. want to. We're working with a, a, a child of God, a human being that is uniquely and wonderfully made that is their situation's not like your situation. You know, right. there's, there's, right. There, it's so unique. You know, could we have gone back and done something different? Maybe. Does it really matter? No. You know, but 
I think for people that are listening, there's not a, I wish there was a two plus two equals four formula for right. you listening right now with your kid. Right. You know, I want to talk about some practical stuff in a little bit, but there's not. <laughs> you know yeah. your kid better than anybody else. And so even if they're an adult, they're still your kid. So you've got to do what you feel is best and adjust when new information comes in, right? And right. and not, but I love that. You and, and I didn't know you then, but yeah. uh, you and Matthew probably were still communicating and you were still trying to figure things out, but you were doing what you felt like the Lord had, was asking you to do and it met a need. Yeah. Right? We didn't have the energy to fight with each other. <laughs> it yeah. was just, you're, when you're at that point, you're in survival mode. Yeah. 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 Well, Kelly, I mean, I, I, would you like to share a little bit about your experience in, in walking through these things as well? Do I have to? No, you no, don't have no, to. No, you I do just, not have to. You do but, because you're yeah. wise, wise, wise. But you have, I agree, no, you have a lot of wisdom, I, lot of wisdom to bring like, to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still, even though it's been going on, or it's ongoing over a decade. Yeah. Because there's been multiple loved ones right. that have struggled. Yeah. And everybody's struggled differently, right. you know? So maybe one struggles with pain meds and the other one struggles with alcohol and the other one, you know, has went deep into heroin. Right. And, you know, and so there, and then there's the other components of lawlessness and jail mm -hmm. and court and, you know, the things that I never thought that Gary and I would right. live through right. or have to face. Right. Yeah. I need a lawyer for what? Yeah. You know, yeah. A, a criminal lawyer, pardon me, you know, and so yeah. you're just like, wow. Mm. All right. And and that's in the midst of um planting a new church, mm -hmm. expanding missions at mm -hmm. World Challenge, mm -hmm. doing pastors conferences. And you know, you I'm not going to be a hireling. Right. I'm going to serve the flock that God has given me. Mm. And um, Deanne talking today about being still and slowing down and hearing. And and that just was not an option. You know, right. I felt like it wasn't an option. Right. And it should have been the first option. Sure. sure. You know, I mean, other than waking up before sunrise and being quiet and praying and asking God for help. You know, mm -hmm. and then looking at a situation and thinking, do you hear me? Right. Can you see this? Are you yeah. doing anything about it? Do you do you know that they're the seed of the righteous? Mm -hmm. And isn't there a promise? And and, you mm -hmm. know, and just truly feeling unheard yeah. and rejected by God. Mm hmm. Because there's prayer after prayer after prayer. And I think in our first um, episode, we were talking about how the church failed us, but ways that the church did serve me, what there were, there were women that would come alongside uh, Deanne being one of those and just praying their hearts out, mm. you know, for the people that I love. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they were bearing that burden. And I'm so thankful for that because yeah. I know that they're, they're probably still praying, yeah. you know, and there's people around the globe that you could trust and share and, and say, hey, this is the situation and yeah. I can't do this by myself. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, maybe God's not hearing my prayer because I'm not seeing just a whole lot happen. So maybe if you join me and pray, <laughs> God will hear you right. pray. <laughs> and, you know, that will, that will bring... push us over the edge. Yeah. But I, I think you, I mean, I appreciate you saying this, Kelly, because I think there are probably pastors and their, and, and pastors' wives and spouses, and uh, we know that there are women pastors as well. So like, you know, but there are probably people listening going, wait, did you just say that I was, you know, praying and I was, you know, that this is how I understand scripture and God's not listening and I felt rejected. And like, well, yeah, you did. And, yeah. and I think we need to hear that because... There's so much shame that can go with that right. when we even feel like we need to utter those words. And, right. and but but God, like you said at the beginning of episode one, like God can handle that. I didn't think I didn't think that was my right understanding, but God can handle that. Yeah. And I think there's something there um, about the ability to take on the the 
I, I think, framework or the, the mindset of David in the Psalms, you know, mm-hmm. of, of lament. Yeah. Of, okay, mm-hmm. I'm just going to unleash it. <laughs> and, yeah. and God, yeah. I, I'm mm-hmm. not going to, it's not my job to protect you. It's my job to be in relationship with you. Right. But I, I, this is something that I'm having to get off my chest, right? And, and lamenting truly, we don't talk about that or teach that as near enough. Oh, I've avoided the book of Lamentations <laughs> yeah. my entire right. Christian life, right. you know, and until recently, until I, I mean, I, since November of yeah. last year, that's where I'm parked. Yeah. I mean, I read it yep. and reread it and reread it, you know, and I'm thinking, wow. God, you were the bear, you were the lion that tore him apart. Mm-hmm. Your arrows are lodged into his kidneys. Mm-hmm. He has drank this poison and it is bitter. And, you know, and then I'm like, I feel every part of that. Yeah. Every the metaphors are every so part of yeah. that. It's so gruesome. Yeah. It is so, so very, very gruesome. And then he says, Yet I remember the steadfast love of the Lord. Yeah never ceases. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, pour yeah. it out, please. Yeah. You know, I can use that. Yeah. But that he's sustaining me in the midst of that pain and that anguish and even that anger that well, I'm feeling towards him. Right. That's his steadfast love. Well, and I am experiencing it. And, I, and And you said it so well, because you didn't say, you know, I had all this pain and anguish, like the metaphors and limitations. And then right. the steadfast love of the Lord. You no, know, it's and. Yes. So it's, they're, they're, this, they're both happening they're at the same time. The yes. companions. Yes. And I don't know where this entered into our mindset as, as parents, as, as Christians, that it was either either or. Right. If I'm in the midst of trials and tribulations and anguish, then the steadfast love of the Lord's not there. Right. But look at the 23rd Psalm. Yes. Though... Yes. I walk through the valley. I'm walking the through the, there, you yeah, know. <laughs> I will fear no evil, you know. Yeah. And I, I think parents, especially parents that are in ministry, need to hear that. It was it was excruciating to be at church, to serve at the prayer time, and to stand with somebody. And, you know, they said, we have a breakthrough. Our prodigal returned. We have victory. They're moving forward. And I'm still living in that place of, I don't even know where my loved one is. Right. I I don't know if they're alive or if they're dead or if they're in jail or, you know. Right. And I'm still dealing with questions. Mm. And um, there was one super sad day, uh, you know, and I, I think I mentioned this to you before, is like, um, we have, we have nine grandchildren, so there's all kinds of wiffle balls, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuzzy bats. I right. mean, but I, I was so frustrated in our circumstances that I was just whacking the, out of the, <laughs> out of the wood pile. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I accidentally like flew back and I hit myself mm. and I was just like. That makes me feel better, mm. you know. And I, yeah. I just wanted to turn the bat on myself. Yeah. You know, thankfully it was just plastic or foam or whatever at right. the time. But, you know, I mean, it was just like the the pain that you feel mm. is like you cannot get comfortable in your own skin. Nope. And you are longing mm. and waiting mm. and hoping and angry. Mm-hmm. You know that. Nothing's changing. Everything's changing, you know, because of nothing changing. Right. Everything is, is changing. changing. Sure. Yeah. And so you're, God, where are you? Where? Where are you? Yeah. You know, and he whispers right here. Yeah. I am right here. Mm. And God's faithfulness, God's mm. faithfulness is without end. Mm. I mean, it just is such a bedrock, Mm -hmm. you know, and when the scripture says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher Mm -hmm. than I. I need that place. I need that, that anchor. Yeah. I need, I need that faithfulness, even though, you know, I want to, ah, 
Well, <laughs> and it doesn't make sense and you can't fix it. And right. it doesn't line up with what you right. were taught as a kid in oh, the church no. or it doesn't, uh -uh. you know, all these kinds of things, right? Right. Coming back to the sovereignty of God, that he doesn't change in the midst of all of this. No. But yeah. he also doesn't make us robots to yep. to fix things. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And that still doesn't compute for me. Right. Yeah. When, when there's this pain and the suffering and these these choices that we make right. that are so detrimental. It's like, God, why? But if he went in and intervened, his sovereignty, he wouldn't be sovereign. Right. And I, that's a theological conversation for a different time right. that yeah. I'm just like, I still wrestle with, you know? Yes. But let's talk about that because I mean, I prayed for Megan. Mm -hmm. Her dad prayed for her. Her spouse prayed for her. Her kids prayed for her. People did. But until she hit the point of going, God, intervene, change me, do yeah. this, this. I mean, we just think that we can pray it all away. Right. They need to align themselves with that prayer as well. Yes. And that was really hard, the days where she didn't have the ability to right. or chose not to. Right. And that's a good distinction. They didn't have, have the to, to yeah. align themselves. There were days she didn't have the ability to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when they don't have the ability to, a that's terminal illness, right. a mental illness, some of those, then we can do that. The intercessory piece. But, we, but right. God doesn't let them off the hook. They have to cry out, yep. God, save me, rescue me, deliver me. Yeah. And that's why I love the picture of David and lament. Like if we type, yeah. his, he's railing against God. He's, you know, he's complaining. Yeah. He's all this. Then he comes back, your steadfast love never ceases. And then he asks, yeah. you know, restore me, Lord, help me, you know, yeah. it's that acknowledgement of, right. it's not just the railing on God, it's the right. it's the acknowledgement of who I am in, in, in light of who God is. And that's a hard piece, especially for parents, to be able to try to, you know, we want our kids to see that, we want our kids to engage right. in that. We can't make them, you know, we can pray for them, but they have to have that, that realization. It's, a, it's, it's hard. Yeah, right. I, I, there's nothing, nothing greater and nothing harder than being a parent. Oh, they don't come with manuals. I no. mean, everything else in your life comes with a manual. <laughs> so uh, for the time that we in the last 10 minutes that we have, I would love to hear from you, to the both of you any words of, of encouragement or affirmation um, or lessons learned. Uh, let's specifically talk to moms right now that are listening, um, that are in the ministry, right, but that, that have a kid that is, is struggling with an addiction or a mental health issue, or they've just just simply walked away from the Lord. Maybe they're not struggling with any of that, but they're a prodigal right now. Right. What, what words of affirmation, encouragement, uh, advice uh, would you give, um, ob obviously based on your, your own lessons learned, um, right. that you would want to encourage a mom listening right now? Trust. What does that mean? Trust the one who's faithful. Okay. But it's also something that we have to do on our part. We have to choose to trust him because mm. he is faithful. Yeah. But us tapping into that, there, there are days where that is an act of will mm -hmm. yeah. to not get mad and go, this is the best you got for me after 40 years of ministry. No, thanks. Right. But the temptation is so strong there. Yeah. But to, but just but to, to stop and go, I will choose to trust you mm. regardless. Mm. And that's an action. It's something you have to train your mind and heart to do. Yeah. Because it was easy for me when Megan first passed and I was just done to go, God, I choose to trust you in this. I could say it kind of flippantly, not flippantly, but just wrote. Right. But to actually make that a part of what you have to do mm. and train your brain to do that, because our heart and spirit does. But for that to be the first thought that you tell yourself in the morning, God, today I choose to trust you. Mm. That was, and you know, there was also, I always have loved the Psalms, but in the last two years I can read them and I go, gosh, if he was in church today, he'd be diagnosed with mental illness. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah. or at least mental health. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's here and it's there and it's up and it's down. It, we're human. We're complex. Well, was it, is it the song by Sanctus Real that talks about that, well, you know, even when sickness takes my child away, yeah. Lord, I trust in you. Yeah. Like that gets me every, I listen to that, I mean, that just wrecks me but it's right. it reminds us that this world doesn't have to make sense yeah um right we talk about that because of the impact of sin brokenness and spiritual warfare right mm. our choices the brokenness of this world and yeah. the spiritual warfare um you know 
my mom always, when I was going through some of my mental health issues, my mom wrote this quote and I have it in my files and I, I actually know it's on my desk. Uh, it says, um, trust in the character of God, not the circumstances of the present or future. Mm. And like, for some reason, that's been my mantra and it provides, just like that, that choosing the right. trust, it provides that, um, it, it almost washes over me Yeah. yeah. in the midst of even the most difficult time. I'm like, okay. Well, that's in the lament. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the character of God. Yes. You know, yeah. And so he's going to. So trust. Yeah, trust. Yeah. Trust. And is... he, hasn't, he hasn't forsaken us. No. I mean, you know, it's really a wonderful verse when people tell you, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers us from them all. And I just want to go, but how long? How long? Yeah. How long, oh Lord? Delivering yeah. us from us all might be not this side of heaven. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. The promise is true, right? But it might not be until we get to heaven. Yeah, hmm. that's that's huge. That's deep too. I mean, something to sit with. And you know what? When you do get angry, that's not a sin. No. Addiction is not a sin. Nope. Depression is not a sin. Nope. Um, and we need to quit stigmatizing people and shaming them that that is there's something broken in you, and there's some sin in your life if you're struggling with these. It's that's not true. It's not. And I had to walk through that process. Yeah. There's one unforgivable sin, and that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's it. Yep. The rest of it is all, you, it can be forgiven, it can be washed under the blood. It is not unforgivable. Right. Thank Doubt you. Doubt is not unforgivable. Yeah. Right. Kelly, what about you? Any Any words of encouragement, wisdom for moms listening? Because I think a lot of times, and again, I'm stereotyping, right? So I'm just going to say that right now. Dad's jump into fix it mode, right? right? Uh, moms are the nurturers. Now I know that that's not true across the board. I think she does sure. both. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, I think that all of us have the capacity for both, right? Right, but stereotypically. But I think for a mom that's trying to nurture their kid that's struggling, right. that is a thankless job. It's a, and it's a never ending job. Right. So I I know that there's probably moms right now listening going. How do I sustain? What do I do? Right. Where do I go? Yeah. What would you say? Well, you can't control it. Yeah. You didn't cause it, and you can't cure it. Okay, say that again. So, <laughs> you didn't cause it. Okay. You can't control it, and you can't cure it. Okay. So that that's, um, you know, from an Al-Anon yep. perspective, which, you know, people need people to walk through them. In these circumstances, they need to have people walk with yeah, them through right. this kind of pain. And um, that that helps, you know, to understand. I'm not going to be able to control this addiction in my family. Right. I'm not going to be able to cure it, yep. and I didn't cause it. Because uh, I think for me, I, I would I don't know if you did, Deanne, but it was just like, what did I do wrong as a mom? Mm. You know, as a parent, how did, how did I fail? Right. And how, I should have been more, you know, and then you fill in the blanks with a list. Yeah. And then that's just condemning yourself. It is. And God does not condemn us. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit will convict us sure. of sin. Right. And then we can respond to that. So if I needed to own up to something, he's going to walk me through something. But condemnation is from the enemy, and you need to say no yeah. in yeah. Jesus' name. Yep. I'm not going to sit under that condemnation. Yeah. So, um, and then it's just, as you can find companions, comrades, mm. friends mm -hmm. that will share the burden without condemning you, Yeah. pray. Yeah. I mean and then pray some more. So, so find community. your voice on your knees. Community. Yep. And then collaborative finding voice and then individual finding voice on your knees is right. is huge. I yep. love the con the the condemnation. I think we we tend to go there quickly. Right. Because it, sometimes it's easier to point the finger at us. Oh yeah. Like I failed. I did this. I did that. Right. Um, I always tell my clients when I'm working with families is. It's our job to recognize maybe what was mm -hmm. and repent if we need to. Right. Um, but we can't do anything about it. Right. We can only do today moving forward. Right. And so there's things that need to change. Great. Change them. Yeah. But yeah. don't 
don't stay in the past. Right. I mean, that's, that's even biblical. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. let's, let's, let's repent where we need to repent if we've not done that. Right. But, but that's it. Yes. And don't make an agreement with the accuser. Yes. So the accuser of the brethren is the devil yep. and the darkness, and he has his minions to be there whispering, yep. you know, so recognize that. And if I make an agreement with the darkness of that accusation, yeah. you know, if I just start going, well, they'll never, and they'll always be, you know, right. so I'm just, I'm just following into that lie and believing that accusation. Yeah. So be aware. It's like, no, I want to think what God thinks about my children yep. and my friends and my family. And I want to stand in a place of faith yep. to believe that they're disciples, they're taught of the Lord, they're obedient to his will, and they have great peace and an undisturbed composure, that they're a child of God, that they are justified, that they have a spirit of reconciliation in mm. them, that, you know, so you, you begin to bring the word of God into those circumstances and believe truth yes. and don't attach yourself to the lie yep. because I mean the accuser accuses always it's relentless and it's not going to be just the person that is struggling it's going to be me you Deanne you know I mean it's across the board everybody's getting accused well it's interesting because I, I tend to think and theologically, I, I don't agree with some people and people don't agree with me, but like, I don't think Satan goes after our weaknesses. I think he goes after our strengths. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I, people I could be proven wrong on that, but just from my own experience, like he's going to go after things that he knows that we are. Right. And then Gary said a couple of podcasts ago that we're not, you know, he's not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. He's, you know. That's he, right. But. He he's going to, he's going <laughs> to, he lies and he's going to go after those things that are going to keep us from really reaching God's fullest potential. Right. So I think that's a great way to, when in community, when trusting, when yeah. praying, it's really reminding ourselves of those things. But for those that are listening, you can't do this by yourself. No. Right. God did not design us to do this solo. No. God no. designed us to do this in community, yeah. good and difficult, right? Right. right. The easy and the, the celebratory. And in the morning, like we, we are not meant to do this by ourselves. And so, right. um, you know, take a look at the show notes. We have a lot of great resources. I know World Challenge has got a lot of great resources. Yes. My Hope Global has a lot of great resources. Um, but we'll put uh, links to different resources in the show notes because um, and then call. You know, I know Gary always says this, call in, email, yeah. you know, we can get you connected with different things. But right. go to myhopeglobal.com. Com. And the Christian Counseling uh, Network uh, is there. You can yeah. actually search uh, your counselors. zip code for counselors uh, to find a, a Christian. And if you're not, if you don't have somebody that's on that list and you know somebody, you can have them uh, reach out and get on the list by applying yeah. as well. Thank you both for yeah. taking the time today, or the, the last couple of days, and, and going through these conversations. And I hope we'll have more of these because I think this is so powerful and so important for um, pastors to hear. Mm, thank you. Thanks, Mark. It was an honor. Each week, this podcast reaches thousands of listeners. This critical work is made possible by the generous contributions of individuals like you who believe in World Challenge's mission. Thank you for listening and supporting World Challenge, transforming lives through the message and mission of Jesus Christ.